I'm Foran, also known as the Esports Historian, and this is going to be my outright odds for IEM Cologne, one of the prestige events of CSGO. Basically, you have the majors are the most important, but then right after that, you have IEM Katowice and you have IEM Cologne. These are the big events people want to win. Obviously, they're also relevant for Grand Slam attempts, aren't they? Now, Esports Bet, the industry's leading crypto odds matrix, has their classic first-time deposit bonus, 50% up to 100 USDT. But do you want an opportunity to earn some free currency that can later be exchanged for USDT? Well, for a limited time only, sign up through my Esports Bet link in the description box below, and you can claim some free ESC via doing any of these three things. You can join the Esports Bet Discord, e discord.gg slash esports bet for 10,000 ESC. You can follow esports bet at esports bet on Twitter for 5,000 ESC. And you can follow esports bet.io on Instagram for 5,000 ESC. After doing any of those things, go to the Discord. I just referenced what it is. Contact customer support in, their dis in the Discord or via the website, and they will give you the currency according to which of the promotions you did. But hurry up because this offer is available for a limited time only. Much like actually doing outright odds for IM Cologne is only going to be available for a few more days. So when you see this video, if you're thinking of doing it, check out my, what I say and then get busy. So as usual, I'll explain to people how you do the outright odds because it's not in the normal CSGO tab of the game hall. What you do here is, I'm on the eSports bull. So here's eSports. I have to go to CSGO if I want to do bets on individual games. But for outright odds, I go right down to the bottom and you'll see... This one here, you can't see it quite because of my camera, but it says outright, and inside it says nine. You click outright, you go up here, I'm going to go to this one, Intel Extreme Masters 2023 Champion Cologne. That's when it's going to be ended totally, but you'll see in a second, I'll just go over to that actually. But you'll see it lasts at the time of recording, four days, 19 hours and 11 minutes. So I'm going to click on that one, and there we go. There are all the potential winners and the odds on the side here. And you know how I do it. I just start at the top. I don't want to waste people's time. I'm starting with the absolute favorites, telling you how well I think they're priced. I'm going down to like dark horses for someone to even be there. And then the very bottom, spoiler, I just tell you don't bet on these teams, basically. If you know how these videos goes, but I tell you what, I've nailed some bangers in the past, boys. I nailed outsiders to win the major enormous odds. I've had a bunch that were really crazy. So let's go through this. Let's start at the top. The number one team in the world, Team Vitality. Yes, they just lost in the blast groups to NIP, which is a bit underwhelming but whatever they've only just brought flames in they are adapting obviously blast groups is famous for notorious upsets it's the first event after the season break with the player break obviously they're coming off winning two events and then going to the finals of a third so this is a team that you know what they're still winding back up they're still getting going that wasn't playoff vitality so yes i do think vitality has a very good chance to win this event i'm not going to pick them as my team to win look they have zero probably the best player in the world they have spinks a very good rifler flames show some potential the rest of the team's solid certainly they're one of the favorites but i'm going to have them second or third personally so i actually think 3.571 i don't really like those enough obviously if you're a big vitality fan you really believe in them you think zero was going to have a big pop-off. This would be a great bet to take. I don't think they're terrible if you actually truly think they're the number one favourite. I just don't. And I will throw in there, look, me and Maui make the joke that it's about the quality of the air in Kanavitsi. But basically... Zewu hasn't really been a super carry at a lot of the big prestige events. This last major was one of the few times he ever did it throughout the whole playoffs and consistently performed in the biggest moments on the stage. Normally, he farms the early to a system or the group stage. And then when he comes to the series, that's the last one they play to win or to lose. Sometimes he's a little bit underwhelming. So I've just seen that happen in the past. The reason why he doesn't have a Kadavitsi or a Cologne title. Well, obviously, we're ignoring online ones. So I'm going to go and look at this. And I actually think... For now, Vitality's got to prove it to me that they're still number one. Then you come to Heroic. Now, these are excellent odds. The problem is this. If you bet on Heroic, I would say maybe do a half unit bet, not your full size bet. Now, the reason half unit is because Heroic absolutely could win the tournament. If I had to pick a team most likely to make the final or semis, it would be Heroic. I think they play the best team Counter-Strike. They have the best trade fragging on T side. They have really good rotations and team play on CT side. They have loads of tactics and setups and flashes on T side. They have a good depth of players. The problem is their AWPer isn't as good as the elite AWPers. Their in-game leader is very good, but he's also the AWPer. You have someone 
Double X Down, who's amazing in group stages, isn't as good in the big playoff games. Yabby's really clutch, but he's not like some Spink slash Zeru level super carry at tournaments. So I just think, until I see them do it in a big prestige event, they've only won blasts so far. Until I see them actually go all the way and win, I don't want to pick them in outright, because outright is to actually win the tournament, not go the really deep or make the finals. So I do think the price is pretty fair there. For a team that on paper can be a favourite, I just got to see them get over the hump like Astralis did back in the day. FaZe Clan, you already know I'm a sucker for FaZe Clan. I even thought they had a great showing here in Blast Groups all in all. I actually think... Genuinely, they still look like, look, if it goes three maps, they can lag on one map. And as a result, sometimes the other team can run away with it. But if they hang in games, they are the toughest team in the game to beat. Carrigan has the golden calls at the end of the game. Rops has impossible clutches. They have a bunch of strong players. Twist just had a big pop-off in blast groups. I love 10-0 odds to win the actual tournament. This is a team that performs fantastically under pressure. Most other teams have won one or two tournaments max. They've won a whole gang of them, guys. They've won something like five tournaments, haven't they? So I think this team is really good at this point in time. I love the FaZe Clan. And I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to take them as my team to win the event. And I'm going to do a full-size bet because I love 10 odds on a team that really has a chance to. Yes, the form isn't as good. Yes, they can look a bit dodgy in the map pool. It's FaZe Clan, though. Under pressure, they win. Then you come down here, you go to G2. I think also excellent odds. Look, G2 can win events. Sure, Hooksy's not really like the most genius caller, so they're not really super duper in that way. Sure, people like Morrissey still may have a little bit of issues later in tournaments, still getting there as a young player. He's only on his second year at this point in time. He hasn't even completed it. So I think actually 10 odds for G2, very good also. If you believe in Nico to pop off, he's already won Karavitsa. If you believe in... JKS to be really consistently good. Looks like an amazing fourth or fifth player at the moment in a team. I think this is a pretty solid flyer to take a dark horse, but at 10 odds, I like that. Then you have Na'Vi at 16.6 odds. Now, here's the thing. This is my dark horse. I already bet on them a bunch of times against Heroic. They were in those games. They could have actually won those potentially, especially the second series. They're a really exciting but incredibly ambitious lineup because of how disparate the places they're all coming from are. They're all speaking second language English. Some players are inexperienced. Some players are very experienced. You've got Alexi B, who's never had a true superstar. Then you've got him with the best superstar ever in Simple, who's really good again, but he's not quite Zewu level yet. So this is such an interesting, exciting experience watching this team play. And I feel like they get better every match. So I'm actually going to say, I'm going to take them as my dark horse. I actually do think as my dark horse, they're cheeky enough. It's between them and Cloud9 that I maybe say they can do it. Can they win the event though? Maybe we do like a third size bet. I think that's what we're going to do. Because remember, I'm going to get 10 odds if FaZe Clan wins. So I'm going to do like, I'm going to do a 150. I'm going to do a cheeky little dark horse on Na'Vi there. Now after Na'Vi, you have Ents. On paper, Ents is a heroic type team. Yeah, they could do it. They've got a nice map pool. They've got a strong leader. They've got some good pieces. Nertz is still getting going as a star, so I can't always rely on him, but he's still good. He has very reliable. Sun Pius is just an above average Orpa. A true, like, he's bordering on star at tier one. I like the team. I like a lot about it, but I also feel like they've got a bit of heroic in them. I think if they get deep in tournaments, they can choke. They almost blew it against FaZe Clan at Dallas, the event they won. I don't know that they're ready to win a big prestige event, so I, I like the odds. They're excellent as a dark horse. I just don't actually believe they can win the tournament, whereas I do think Simple can win the event. I do think that Nico could pop off and he could win. I do think that FaZe Clan has the, the clutch players to do it. Then we come to the other dark horse. Problem is, this is sight unseen for me. Like, if I'm betting on this team here, what do I really know about them, right? On paper, it looks insane. I don't know how IGL's going to work out. I expect Electronic just calls a bit looser. But the actual mechanical level of this team looks like potentially the highest ever seen in Counter-Strike. My old favourite was Team Liquid 2021, uh, 2019. Obviously, Na'Vi 2021, honourable mention. That's a very strong mechanical team. This Cloud9 team could outdo them all. Because let's be real, Perfecto is a mega low econ, low resource both Clutcher and Fragger. Then you have Electronic, a beast entry player, an AK player. Then you have Axel, maybe the best rifler in the world. And you have Shiro, contender for best opera in the world. So you have actually three studs. Hobbit's still in the mix. as a veteran who could still have some pop-offs and could be a solid piece within the team. And then you've also got Perfecto, probably the best closer in the game. Maybe Rops can take that title from him now, to be fair. This team on paper looks bonkers, but I've never seen them play. So if you really believe in them or you're a Cloud9 fan, I think these are insane odds. Almost 20 odds to win the tournament. It could happen. I just don't know. I have to see Electronic IGL first. 
Then we got Liquid. I actually like the new Liquid squad in this sense. I think Rain Waker looks like an excellent pickup. Daps has really spotted what he needs in the team to round out some of the support elements better than a leash could. Then you've got in Patsy, who's apparently sort of replacing Yakindar as the aggressive rifler. Looks like a star rifler. Looks like he could have a Yakindar type. I can be a top 20 player in the year on Hot Shell TV at the end of the year. The problem is, Yakindar has clearly capped his own game by coming in IGL. That's just obvious. That's the curse of the secondary caller. Then you've got Orsi, who's still just whatever. He's just average at tier one. That's going to be hard against the elite Orpers. And then you've got Naf, who's very good and is the closer, but you've got to get the rest of the team working. So in blast groups, it looked really good. This was very impressive and the map pool looked pretty good. But can that survive to playoffs where you can already himself drops off? Can it actually survive? Will people like Rain Waker and Patsy be good in Team Liquid in a big playoff like a Cologne? I don't know yet if they're ready for that. I think for Dark Horse odds... I'd rather go for Cloud9 or Na'Vi, personally. But I don't hate Team Liquid, if you're a fan of them. I just don't think they've got the best IGL or the best Orpa. And I think the two most important positions in the game is IGL and Orpa. That's why I can take... Na'Vi, because they've got Alexi B and Simple, both really good. For Cloud9, they've got Shiro, and they've got maybe Electronic. I don't know how Electronics could be. That's why I'm a bit more off on them, you see. That's why for G2, I think Monacy is really good. He can almost make it as the superstar. I don't think Hooks is quite good enough. You can see the people I'm not betting on and the people I am betting on using my principles of Counter-Strike. So I don't hate it at 20 odds. I think Mouse is priced way too low. There's no chance Mouse wins this event, in my opinion. I don't think the new look Mouse, it, it's got enough with Shuhi. Shu, I do think he can turn the team around by the, by the sounds of it. He's going to make Torji way better. But aside from that, the JDC angle, he actually looked like a solid supportive element. He probably was integral in making the team. I don't know how this works out. I'm a little bit concerned, I've got to say. So as a result, I don't think 20 is enough. And I don't think they can win the tournament, quite frankly. They'll fall apart probably in quarters if they make it there. Apex, we're all loving the major. They got JL taken from them though, didn't they? JL was the player. We saw his fragging at the major. Look, the star player, probably Nork. Steak was the supportive element who can do what he wants. Decent IGL in from Kixon, right? I just don't believe this team could win. I think 25 odds is not enough. And quite frankly, losing JL, I think, is going to hurt this squad. I don't think they're going to be as good. Then you've got NIP. Look, crazy odds. There's a world where they could win it. I don't really believe in Hampers as an IGL, though. Who's the true star? Is it Godfig? Is it Brawl? Who, the, who knows? Head Trick is coming on leaps and bounds, but this is a big event ask to ask him to pop off at Cologne when he's only been an Orpa for what? Like realistically, six, seven months. You can add in when he studied for Na'Vi and Blast Academy and Blast groups instead of simple, whatever. I just don't think that's high enough. Astralis, look, I don't hate the new Astralis. I don't like blame F as an IGL. I don't think those are high enough odds. I don't think they can win. Fury, it's certainly not impossible, can win. I actually think there's a they're a dark horse team that could do it. 33 odds is crazy. If you're just really a massive fan of Fallen or you think he's going to be able to enable people like Yuri and Kesarato Kisar more, Art's going to be a menace. I don't hate this, actually. It's a really crazy, uh, um, it's a really crazy dark horse. Fury is probably it, and 33 odds is really good. I mean, for a laugh, I should just put like 20 euro on it, right? Maybe I will. Maybe just as a laugh to show you, I'll put like 25 euro on that. 25 USDT. Because if they would, it'd just be hilarious, wouldn't it? And it'd look funny, I bet, on Fallen. Game of Legion, they just lost their best player, Emma. I do not think they can be as good. They don't have bad players now, but the idea they're the same odds as NIP and, and Furia, not for me. Fnatic being 40, I still just don't think Fnatic's got a good enough team. I'm not a fan of Dexter. So as a result, I don't think they have a chance to win the event. Monty... I mean, some of their players, they've lost some of the big names. I don't think this is a team that does anything. I don't even think I would at all consider it. Forza amazingly managed to keep their talent. If you want the most bonkers outsiders ever, maybe you pick this. Just they're not going to win. Like, once they get to the playoffs, they can cause one upset. That's it. They're not going to close out games. They're notorious for losing 16-14, 16-13 against big teams in the big best of three in the tournaments. They're just not a high enough quality team, even though they are solid for a dark horse. 9-9-9. Nine, nine, nine. I thought they were overrated going in the major. They did nothing at the major. Imperial, remember, that's obviously going to be a different lineup. It doesn't have Fallen now. Look, I think in theory they could frag better without Fallen, but he was surely doing something. His utility looked good. I think, look, the, the odds are mental. So if you're just Brazilian, maybe you bet it, but I would bet Furia personally. I just don't think they can. Forget Pain Gaming, Into the Breach, obviously like Cypher's going somewhere else. Big Academy, it's not even bigger, remember, it's Big Academy. Now look, Big Academy actually has some solid players on it now. They are 250, but are they going to win IM Claude on home soil? Are they? Fuck. Then you've got Greyhound Gaming. You know what I feel about them. They're just trash bags. They're only here because of the Oceanic BS, right? Or the 
HL TV rankings that you just get boosted on. And I don't care about the Mongols. Yeah, they had some cool stuff before. They changed one of their players out. So yeah, I'm basically going with my true favourite on paper is heroic, but I'm going to go with FaZe Clan to win the tournament. Then I've got Na'Vi as a dark horse, and then I've got as a really crazy dark horse, I did a tiny bit on Fury, because it's not impossible they could do it. There, that's who I think wins. I am Cologne. Obviously, check out the website for more details. Did you know they have their Watch to Earn scheme, where you can actually watch streams embedded on the site and earn crypto to use on the site? By the way, you can also get like 50% more if you're actually watching like partners who stream on a sports bet just a little detail for you there obviously follow the affiliate link or look on the esports bet discord for further details